Two big crisps. Mm -hmm. It's really thin and ultra crispy. Mm. That's how you know. I'm in heaven. Look at that, guys. Now, look at that. That's the fanciest karaoke you're ever gonna have. <laughs> you guys, I'm gonna rush. I'm gonna put some more of this on there. and he's gonna cook for us some Hawaiian dishes. What do we have here, Chef? Yeah, so we're gonna do like a very, very quintessential, Whoa! iconic Hawaiian dish called poke. Poke in Hawaiian actually means to chop into cubes. So essentially, you could poke anything. But that word has really, over the years, been associated with this amazing raw fish dish that I grew up. It's my favorite food in the world. And today we're gonna do a mixed poke. So while traditionally we use ahi tuna, uh, today we're gonna add a little salmon in there and a little taco or he'e in Hawaiian. Uh, but a little bit of octopus. And then we set some tuna. We're gonna put it all together and mix it up. We don't even need a stove today. It's gonna be a fresh, awesome, salady fish. I mean, it's gonna be, be amazing and delicious. Oh my, it's, it's gonna be my first poke from home because I always eat it in restaurants, you know, readily available, but, and made by chef. Yay. Okay, I'm so excited, let's All right, go. I'm so excited too. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by cutting our tuna into cubes. People often ask me, like, do I need to use sushi grade tuna or sashimi grade tuna? You know, really, the tuna is gonna be marinated in all these spices. So, you know, get some nice fresh tuna from your local market and that'll be totally fine. Now, in Hawaii, we like to chop it into big cubes, depending on where you are, know your audience, right? Uh, so, I'm gonna do medium size. You know, the cool thing about growing up in Hawaii is you can go to your local grocery store and you can almost get any kind of poke you want. It's so awesome. And everything is fresh. And everything is fresh. Now, magic of TV, I do have some fish already chopped up in there. I'm gonna add more tuna to that. I'm gonna take a little bit of salmon and do the same thing. Salmon belly has all this marbling here. Ooh. Right? More marbling, more flavor. Fat is flavor. Fat is flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna just say marbling, but I love it. That's the truth. Fat is flavor, guys. So wow. we're gonna add this to our bowl as mm. well. And then last but not least, we're gonna get some of our octopus in there. When I was a kid, my grandfather, I remember vividly that he would take me on his back spearfishing and we would hunt for our own octopus in Hawaii. Seafood is really something that we have an easy access to in yes. Hawaii. Yes, we are surrounded by the ocean. We are the world's most isolated archipelago, so group of islands. We're about 2,000 miles away from California. It's an amazing place and because we're so far away, we have a very unique ecosystem and environment. There it is, all of our fish in and then we're gonna go in. I'm gonna move this on the side and bring this bowl of magic right here. And then I'm gonna put you to work. Wow. All right, first okay. you're gonna add some of our sesame oil right here. So take that, we're gonna do about half of that. It's gonna add some nuttiness, a little smokiness, and it's also gonna keep our fish nice and shiny. Awesome, all right, and go right back on our knees. Put this in. I'm gonna give a little sprinkle of salt here. We need to make like a new motion for salt, but like, oh. <laughs> that's our new motion here, the snake. Ooh. Now what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you use the microplaner. Okay. We're gonna get one, maybe half a clove of garlic in there. So okay. you just put it right over this, and then we'll do like the same this. thing, yep. We're gonna do the same thing with our ginger. Perfect. I mean, garlic makes the world go round, right? I Ugh. love garlic. It's savory, the umami, a little acidic. So that's some ginger, I love ginger. Is this considered a national dish? You know what, to me, it's definitely the Hawaiian national or state dish, absolutely. Now for texture, we're gonna add some sesame seeds and some spring onions. So go about half of that right in there. Again, nuttiness, you're gonna get a nice texture in there, plus that nice flavor of sesame. Is this again. toasted? That's toasted, wow. yeah, yes. And let's get soy sauce in there as well. This is the Kikuman brand. In Hawaii, we have Aloha Shoyu, which is the local brand. All right, so I'm gonna give this a quick stir for our viewers. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That looks amazing. Toss in those uh, spring onions. It's really vibrant. It's like a happy bowl. That's right. And healthy. Yeah. Because, you know, nothing is fried. Right. Before we plate it up, we're gonna do a quick taste test. If you like extra garlic, go extra garlic. Like more ginger, go more ginger. If you don't eat raw fish and you don't like unicorns and rainbows, that's your fault. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is poke for real, for real. Oh my gosh. It's like butter mouth in your mouth. We wish you could be here with us, but we don't kind of wish not because then you would eat all of our poke. Ooh. And look, I mean, look at that. Now what we're gonna do, we'll make like one pretty plate. So it's not necessary that there's always rice. You can eat it like, no, just actually, like actually, the whole rice thing came way later. I mean, we ate poke with anything on the side. We especially eat it with poi, which is made from taro, a Hawaiian tuber. That's the best thing for poke. It doesn't have a lot of huge flavor. It's really there to help soothe the palate. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna pick your favorite flower and, and pick one of the petals off, and we're gonna decorate our poke. How's that sound? We're gonna open our thing. The poke stays. Oh, that's magic. Our blue pea flower all the way from Singapore. How can that not be pretty? I feel like a chef for a few minutes. And then, <laughs> to top off our beautiful hero plate, we're going in with our purple yam look chips. Look at this, look at this. Oh. oh my. And this is homemade as well. Yes. Look at this, everybody. Look at that. Colors. Will you say that this is a Japanese influence? There are, there are some ingredients that are Japanese influenced, like soy, or shoyu, or soy sauce was brought into Hawaii, so was sesame oil and sesame mm -hmm. seeds. So those things. The very traditional poke was basically straight up seaweed with tuna with a little bit of sea salt. It's uh, really good. Yeah, like it's, I mean, the fish is buttery, it's fresh, it melts in your mouth. Then you have the umami from the soy and the sesame. You have texture from the spring onions and the sesame seeds. Top that off with the earthiness of the edible flowers and the crisp texture of that. We have to make this ube crisp. It's really thin and ultra crispy. Mm. That's how you know. I'm in heaven. All right, karaoke time. We're gonna about to make one of the desserts from my childhood growing up in Hawaii. My grandmother's Filipino, so I grew up with a lot of Filipino food. And I actually have this on the menu at my restaurant outside of Washington, D.C., Falston, Maryland, called Uncle's Hawaiian Grinds. Yeah, it's an amazing bite-sized dessert, completely plant-based. It's a vegan dessert. It wasn't intended to be, but it just happened that we have magic goodness of coconut and coconut milk, some rice flour, and some sugar. We'll get started. It's so simple. You can make this at home. It's called karaoke, which is one of the favorite famous Filipino street So in my bowl here, I have a little bit of rice flour, about three quarters of a cup or so. And we're gonna go in with a couple of ingredients more. This is desiccated coconut. You can use sweet and shredded coconut. Gives it a nice texture and that imparts that coconut flavor that we love and is reminiscent of both Hawaii and the Philippines. Now to make our dough, we're gonna add coconut milk, but we're gonna add it fairly slowly. We're looking for a, a nice consistency that will allow us to be make a pliable dough so we can form it into balls. So I'm gonna add a little bit at first. So, so far we have our coconut, our rice flour, and we have some coconut milk, tablespoons of sugar, and start there. We are gonna serve this with this amazing coconut caramel glaze, Ooh. which will add some cool sweetness as well. You don't have to go too sweet in the dough mixture. I'm gonna give that a little toss. Now, if you find that your dough is too dry, you're gonna go in with a little bit more coconut milk. If it's too wet, then you would add a little bit more flour. I'm gonna go a little more, a little bit more coconut milk. Add some moisture into our dough, just until you see all of that shredded coconut rice flour come together and you can mold it sort of like a cookie dough. Look at that, look at that nice dough we got there. Now that we have a pliable dough, I can pick it up. I got gloves on to make it a little easier and we don't, it doesn't get too sticky. But here is our karaoke dough. And you can make them as big or as little as you want, but I'd say to go to a medium or small size, that way it dries faster. So you wanna keep your oil around 175 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Honestly, if they're not all the same size, it doesn't matter because it's still going to taste and catch a bowl. So traditionally, karaoke balls, they're served in a skewer. So it looks like kind of like a barbecue yeah. or a look, look here in Singapore. Commonly found anywhere in the Philippines. All done. That's it. So easy, everybody. That was so easy. And the next is? In the fryer it goes. We're going to give it a warm bubble bath in oil. And then at the same time, we're going to make our coconut caramel sauce which is two ingredients, folks. 
literally you can put it on anything, you can put it on a brownie, you can put it on cake, you could put it on shoelaces and it will still taste good. <laughs> I promise. Alright, so straight from the bag, we're gonna add some brown sugar. Uh, and we're just gonna melt some brown sugar as if we're making caramel with white sugar, but we're just gonna let the brown sugar melt a little bit. And then we're gonna add some coconut milk and that's gonna be our coconut caramel. So easy. We're at 195 Celsius, perfect for deep frying. Perfect, look at that. It's gonna end up being nice golden brown color, scrumptiously crispy on the outside, rich and wonderful on the inside. My sugar is melting. I wish that we had smell-o-vision so you could see how it is. I'm gonna add a little coconut milk so we don't have any burnish. And uh, whew, look at that, you guys, look at that. Pour this on anything, and it doesn't matter what your dessert looks like. When you pour that, I mean, it's gonna be mad. Look at that, oh my gosh. Just don't pour it on your skin, go burn it. <laughs> Look, our coconut caramel took one minute. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Alright, so here we go. Here are our golden fried, crispy on the outside, magical in the middle. We're gonna just drop it in our caramel and give it a nice warm. We just had a bubble bath, now we're having a mud bath. Skincare is important. You wanna get it nice and coated. These are a bit hot. Let me stab the next one. There we go. Now, for some beautiful presentation, I'm gonna actually just tap it right in our coconut dust, look at that. It looks like it's snow dusted right here in Singapore. It reminds me of my childhood right here. Oh, hot, 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 hot. There we go. More coconut dust. I mean, can't go wrong with that. Now I'm gonna take the rest here and I'm gonna just drop them in while they cool off right in our coconut before I string them up. All right, that's a little easier because it's not as hot. And this one is gonna be a three topper. Look at that, guys. Now, look at that. That's the fanciest karaoke you're ever gonna have. I'm gonna take the two topper. Cheers. Cheers. You guys, oh my gosh, I'm gonna put some more of this on there. Mm. There's a slight difference in the texture, mm -hmm. but the flavor is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing will go wrong with coconut. Caramel is life. That is it. Coconut caramel, my friends. Even my plant-based friends, there's no dairy here. My vegan friends, no dairy. Just coconut and magic. <laughs> oh no, delicious. Actually, this is a good close of the day, like after all that savory poke. And it, this is not too sweet, right? Okay. The best. Oh good dog stuff. Thank you everybody out there. All my Foodie Mama PH fans out there. It's been such an honor to be here in Singapore and to meet a kindred spirit who loves food just as, just as much as me. Mahalo everybody and aloha. I might come back and sing you a song actually. Thank you for doing the closing. That's it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that we belong together. Dress it up with the trappings of love. I'll be captivated. I'm hanging from your lips instead of the gallows of heartache that hang from above. <laughs> love you guys. Oh my god. Take care everybody. Mahalo and aloha. See you in Singapore. See you in Singapore. Bye.